Good night, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I am Sheba Gordon, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to another Sunday night spiritual booster as you get ready to face the upcoming week. Tonight's topic, building family resilience. What's tonight's topic? Building family resilience. When you hear the word resilience, what comes to mind? Please comment below your definition of resilience. Also, please share the link, invite a friend, so that they too can gain some insight into building their family resilience. Shall we pray? Our Father and God, we are so thankful for you being with us throughout this day. We give you praise. Thank you for the opportunity to share in another experience with you. Please be with those who have joined us. May you grant them your blessing. Be with us here and may everything be done to your name's honor and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our spirits take delight in the wondrous presence of our God in singing. Let us now join our sisters, Daniela Jeremiah, J.D. Jeremiah and Surana Phillip as they sing to God. Good night, everyone. Please join with us as we sing our first song, 493, Fill My Club, Lord, and Lift It Up, Lord. Like a woman at the well I was seeking For things I could not satisfy And then I heard my Savior speaking Draw from the well that never shall run dry Fill my cup, Lord, and lift it up, Lord Come and quench this thirsting of my soul Oh, 
are craving the pleasure earthly things are for but none can find your wondrous treasure that i find in jesus christ my lord fill my cup lord and lift it up lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of heaven fill me till i want no more fill my cup fill it up and make me whole so my children if this thing this will give you next song will be hymn 469 leaning on the everlasting arms what a fellowship what a joy divine leaning on his arms what a blessing what a peace is mine, leaning on his arms, I'm learning how to lean and depend on Jesus, he's my friend and he's my guide, I'm learning how to lean. that makes us happy 579 579 this love that makes us happy this love that smooths away it helps us mind, it makes us kind to others every day. God is love, we're his little children. God is love, we will be like him. Tis love that makes us happy, tis love that smooths away. It helps us mind, it makes us kind to others every day. This world 
is full of sorrow, of sickness, death, and sin. With loving hearts we'll do our part and try some soul to win. God is love, we're His little children. God is love, we will be like Him. This love that makes us happy, this love that smooths away. It helps us, but it makes us kind to others every day. This life is over and we are called above. Our song shall be eternally of Jesus and His love. God is love, we're His little children. God is love, we will be like Him. This love that makes us happy, this love that smooths away. It helps us smile, it makes us kind to others every day. Final song, hymn 92, This Is My Father's World. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, indeed a delight to sing praises to God. What do you say? Amen. When I think of the word resilience, the serenity prayer comes to mind. Say it with me. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Sister Shirley Roberts will now take us to the throne of grace. Good evening, everyone. It is always a pleasure where God's people can come together to read his words. I invite you now to take your Bibles and let us turn to Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Let us read. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. 
He giveth power to the faint, and to them that has no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What wonderful promise we have in God's word. Let us bow our heads as we pray. O great and eternal one, we come in your holy presence, not because we are worthy, but we come, dear Father, because Jesus has made it possible. Lord, you are a great God. You are the ruler. You are the creator. The song says he's got the whole world in his hands. You are such a big God and mighty Father, and yet you're small enough to live within our hearts. We thank you. We praise you for your majesty and power. Lord, Jesus gave his life on the cross so that we can all have redemption. We thank you for this. And because, dear Father, of Jesus' blood, we can come to you. You say that we should come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy. So, Lord, we ask that you would have mercy upon us. Because, dear Father, so many times we have ungodly mindsets. So many times, dear God, we are selfish. We have wrong motivation. We are envious. Sometimes we hate our brothers. Our sins are so many, dear Father. We pretend sometimes. But Lord, our lives are an open book before you. You know everything. And so we plead your mercy. We ask, oh Father, that you would take us. And we ask that you would save us. Father, there are so many needs. There are so many challenges. And we come to you, dear Lord, knowing that you're the one we should come to. Where could I go but to the Lord? So we bring our needs and our concerns before thee. Lord, financial needs. So many people are out of a job. And sometimes there are those who are in the job, but their father has re have received salary cut. But Lord, the bills are there mounting higher and higher. And the children to go to school. Lord, I pray that you would look upon us with our needs, dear Father. Supply our needs according to your riches and glory. Please provide jobs for those who are seeking. Provide avenues, dear Father, so that we can do things to bring a little on income. We thank you, dear Lord, for this. We also pray, dear Father, for our families. Lord, this week, family week. And dear Father, so much emphasis has been placed on rebuilding family resilience. Lord, we thank you for the family. And we pray, dear God, that you would bless all families. Pray for father, mothers, children. Sometimes, dear Lord, it's rocky. So many persons have broken hearts. So many family members are disappointed. Oh, holy God. Even sometimes there are abuse of many, many kinds. Lord, we know that the devil doesn't like the family to remain together, that great institution. So we lift our families into your care, dear Father. And we thank you for what you will do. We pray for healing. Father in heaven, 
every day we're just hearing that this person passed on and this person passed, dear God. Lord, we know that you are the healer. We know, dear Father, that you can save us from all manner of sickness. When Jesus was on this earth, he healed. He even raised Lazarus to life, dear Father. And nothing is too hard for you. Chronic disease, dear Father. Diabetes. Cancer. Hypertension. Lord, there's too many, too many. Oh, holy God, I ask in your mercy that you will heal us. There are those who are mourning the loss of their loved ones. Father in heaven, bring comfort. We're so happy that you have given us your word which says, soon and very soon when you come, there won't be any more pain, no sickness, no sadness, but dear Lord, joy and peace as we live with you. And we know, Father, that you are coming soon. But we are not ready. So many times we talk about getting ready. Oh, Holy Father, I pray that you help us all to live in alignment with your holy precepts, dear God, and make us ready to meet you. Creating us clean hearts and renew the right spirit within us. Oh, Father, we thank you for the victories you have given us. We pray that you help us day by day as we trust in you, as we depend upon you, as we keep your promises in our hearts, dear God. Help us, O oh Lord Jesus, to know that you are coming soon. And we thank you for this. So we pray that you continue to bless us. Bless our children and teachers as they go to school. Bless our government, dear Father, as they make plans for our country. We pray, O oh Holy Father, that you bless the administration of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Bless this world at large, dear Father. And Lord, when you shall come, may you just save us. Save us because, dear Father, this is what Jesus gave his life for. And may we with open arms say, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. Thank you, dear Father. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This next young lady loves to render her praises to God in singing. At this time, I welcome Sister Diana John as she blesses our heart with special music. The song that I'm about to sing tonight is just a reminder, letting you know that whatever shackles may have you bound, whatever problems, whatever tribulation, whatever hardship you may be going through, all you have to do is lay them at the feet of Jesus because he is the greatest chain breaker. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life, there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just in right. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. 
If you need freedom, a saving, He's a prison shaking Savior. If you got chains, He's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you're not pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Whole world change breaker. We welcome our health ministries and stewardship director, Pastor Edward Guillaume, a man who loves the Lord and lives for Him, a man who does not disappoint when it comes to the Word of God. Pastor Guillaume. Good evening and greetings to all our lovely viewers and listeners out there. As a sister sang a while ago, whatever you need, God is able. All you need to do is believe and you will receive. Tonight I'm here to share with you from God's word. It's a blessed privilege. To do so, I want to speak to us on the topic, the newer than normal, the newer than normal. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. The eternal, loving, gracious Father, we thank you that we are still in the land of the living. Despite the challenges of life and the hardships, the problems and the issues, that confront us on a day-to-day -day basis. We can still look to you because you are only solace, comforter, and hope. A special way, O oh God, even as I stand in the gap between the living and the dead to proclaim your everlasting gospel, I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will give me the inspiration, put the words in my mouth and the meditation in my heart so that it will be acceptable in your sight, and that some soul out there, some soul who have not yet given their lives to Jesus Christ will do so before it is too late. So bless your words to our hearts even now, we pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have been hearing the expression, the new normal. The term suggests that it is a period of changes, period of adjustments, adaptation, even inconvenience and discomfort before we can expect a state of normalcy. You see, the new normal continues to pose economic, social, health, and religious challenges. And so today, we have physical and social distancing which will be with us for a while. In some workplaces and institutions, there is the shift system where persons work by shift. And then we have in our restaurants, you will see less tables in our restaurants. You will see staggered classes or online classes and meetings. Then we have sanitizing and uh, personal health practices 
have been overemphasized. And so they are encouraging us to practice regular hand washing, wearing face masks in public places and practicing respiratory etiquette. Travel regulations, even in the new normal, we have travel regulations and restrictions. And you have been hearing about chartered flights. When it comes to the banking system, you realize that the banks are even encouraging more digital transactions. As a matter of fact, it was recorded that during COVID, 90% uh, of the transactions were done through mobile app, ATM, and cash machines, and 10% were done over the counter. Even our church services in the new normal, our church services have been affected. Funerals have been affected. Weddings have been affected. And so, in other words, the health experts as well as our government officials are telling us that COVID-19 will shape what the future looks like. Simply put, life with COVID-19 will never be the same. You know, one newspaper editor and researcher has predicted, and here's his his prediction, I quote it, it's, he says that there is no going back to normality. The train has left us. The train has left the station, sorry. The coronavirus isn't going away. And even when there is a vaccine, he says, the risks will ensure a ready supply of zoonotic this, uh, virus. See this prediction? As I read this prediction, it seems to indicate that we are heading into a future of caution rather than a brave new world. Therefore, the new normal will require us to, to adjust, to make adjustments, to adapt to the new economic, social, and religious changes that will occur. You see, friends, as long as COVID-19 is around, it will not only call for caution in the way we do things and interact with others, but it will remind us of the negative impact of sin on human lives and the environment. May I submit to you tonight that as long as sin is around, as long as sin is around, it will cause more crises. As long as sin is around, it will cause more diseases, more disasters, and even death. As long as sin is around, it should not only cause us to be more cautious and conscious, but to be ready for the changing times and the second coming of Jesus Christ. May I give you a word of caution? Here's a word of caution. Don't allow, listen to me, don't allow anyone to deceive you into thinking that a new normal will be a time of peace and safety. Matter of fact, the Bible affirms it. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, the Bible affirms or confirms. The Bible says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. May I say to you tonight, that while the new normal will come with new expectations, we should not be taken by surprise. We should always be ready for the changes that will come. We should be ready because we don't know what is next. May I inform you tonight that the new normal will come with economic, health, and religious changes and challenges which can become terrifying. They can also become perplexed and they can also be chaotic. And if you don't believe me, here's what the Bible says in Luke chapter 21, verse 8 to 11, and verse 25 and verse 26, the Bible records, the Bible says, and he said, take heed, that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, 
on the time drawing near. And so the Bible is saying to us, Go ye not therefore after them. In verse 9, the Bible says, But when you shall hear, but when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then he said unto them, Jesus speaking, he says, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall be there, shall be there from heaven. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea rowing, the sea and the waves rowing. And so in verse 26, the Bible says, Men's heart filling them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. What the Bible is saying here, the Bible is just warning us that the new normal will come with deceptive, terrifying, perplexed, chaotic, and even fearful events and experiences. Here's what Ellen White says in the book Education, page 179. I want to read a statement here that she wrote many years ago that confirms what happens today, is happening today. She says in the book Education, page 179, paragraph 4, she says, Today, the signs of the times declare that we are standing on the threshold of great and solemn events. She continues to say that everything in our, our world is in agitation. Before her eyes is fulfilling the Savior's prophecy of the events to precede his coming. She says, ye shall hear of wars, quoting the Bible, ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. I am sure that you will agree with me. That the attention of every inhabitant on planet earth is fixed on the overwhelming events that are taking place on this planet. Here's what Ellen White says in the same book, speaking about the present. She's now speaking about the present. She wrote it many years ago, but she's speaking about the present. She says, the present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living, rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, Thinking men and women of all classes have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. She continues to say, they are watching the strained, restless relation that exists among nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element. And they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place, that the world is on the verge, the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. The new novel indicates that things don't continue as normal as before. And if you believe that things continue as normal from before, the Bible describes you as a scoffer. Here's what the Bible says. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 4, the Bible says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own loss, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things, that's what they say, that's what the scoffers say, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. But I submit to you tonight that the new normal only indicates that things don't continue as normal as before. You see, the word new, the word new signifies that while there, there will be some level of normalcy, many things have changed and even force us into adapting to new measures and practices, some of which 
and mandatory. The new normal can give us a false sense of security, but don't be caught unawares. So the Bible reminds us in Luke chapter 21, verse 34 to verse 36, the Bible says, And take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with sufficing excess and intemperance and drunkenness and the cares of life, so that the day come upon you unawares. It is important to note that we must be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, in verse 35, the Bible says, For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Listen to this. On the face of the earth. So in verse 36, the Bible says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. The only way that you can escape what is to come upon planet Earth is to ensure that you give your lives to Jesus Christ even tonight. While we live in the new normal, the Bible encourages us that we must be sober. We must be vigilant. Because the devil is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour because he knows that he has a short time. The devil is in for the kill. And if you are not cautious, the new normal challenges and changes can severely affect your mental health. It can affect your decision making. It can also affect your financial resources. And more so, more so, may I warn you, all of those things that are happening here, the challenges and the changes, it can also affect your salvation. But if you are firm and grounded in Jesus, regardless of what takes place around us, we know that we have hope and we can look up to Jesus because we know that our redemption draws it now. So the Bible is, re the, the devil, sorry, the devil is redoubling his efforts and has intensified this warfare, this warfare that we are in on a global scale, apart from affecting your health and my health and, and well-being, he has affected all aspects of life, including the economic aspect, including the social, even including our religious activities. Currently, planet Earth is groaning and travailing in pain as a woman in intense labor who is about to be delivered. Planet Earth is currently experiencing second stage of labor when the baby is just about to be born. Planet Earth is experiencing second stage labor when its labor pains and contractions of last day global events are more frequent and intense. I like the way that Paul puts it. Puts it. In Romans chapter 8, verse 22 and verse, verse 25, he says, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain until now. It's not only the plant kingdom or the animal kingdom, not only the earth itself that is groaning, but even humankind, mankind is groaning. So the Bible says, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and traveleth in pain together. I guess you are familiar with the phrase that has been often used. We are in this together. Together we will fight COVID. Before this phrase came about. It was already mentioned in the Bible. So when Paul says, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together, Paul is saying to us that together we are in this. Whether you are Christian or non-Christian, whether you are a believer or non-believer, together we are in this together. And that's why he says in verse 23, he says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, 
even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to it, the redemption of our bodies. But I like verse 24, it says, For we are saved by hope. Somebody say amen. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then the Bible encourages us, it says, then do we with patience wait for it. There is great hope, I say to you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters out there, there is great hope. Among us, there is great hope that we can still look up amidst the challenges, amidst the, the sufferings, amidst the deaths. We can still look up. There is great hope among many that the fight against COVID-19 will be won and it will be a thing of the past and that things will be normal again. There are many today who are still looking forward. Instead of looking upward, they are looking forward and hoping that COVID-19 will pass and they can go back to work again. There are those who cannot wait for COVID to pass. They are just hoping that COVID will pass so that they can go back to the classroom again. They can go back to church again. They can go back to their normal routine of life again. But I come by here tonight to give you some good news. The good news I have for you tonight is that there is a newer than normal that we must look for, we must hope for, and we must wait for. I believe that somebody out there did not hear me. So I'm going to repeat it. The good news that I have for you tonight is that there is a newer than normal that we must look for. We must hope for. And we must wait for. Here's how Titus puts it. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 and 14. The Bible says, looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So even though you may be looking forward for COVID to pass, may I submit to you today that you can look up because we know that one of these days, Jesus will come and put an end to all the suffering and disasters and diseases that we have on planet Earth. So the Bible says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. I submit to you tonight that a newer than normal is coming. A newer than normal is coming, and I'm excited about it. It will be a time of ultimate deliverance. It will be a time that will come when everything on this earth will come to an end. But what matters most is our relationship with Jesus. And so my encouragement to you is to wait for it. Wait for it. If you are running out of patience, Here's what the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. The Bible says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak. And not lie. Though it tarry, though it seems as if there's a delay, he's saying to us to wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. You are out of patience. My counsel to you today is to wait. If David decided to wait for it a long time ago and he did not see because he died, what about us whose salvation is nearer than when we first believe? David's eager anticipation and waiting is expressed in Psalm chapter 130, verse 5 and 7. I want to read it for you. He says, here's what David says. He says, I wait for the Lord. He was alive then. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. 
My soul waited for the Lord more than day. That watch for the morning. I wish I could explain this text a little more. The Bible says, I say more than day that watch for the morning. It says, let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. And with him is plenteous redemption. Somebody say amen out there. So here's a wise counsel David has left for us. He's dead. But he died without hope. He died without hope of seeing the new than normal. And as, even though he died, he left with us a counsel that I want to share with you. But those of us who are alive today, here's what he says in Psalm 27 and verse 14. He says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, he says, I say, on the Lord. One of these days, somebody say hallelujah. One of these days, our hoping and waiting will come to an end. Somebody say praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to verse 31, I love this text. It says, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, <clears throat> fainted not. Neither is weary. There is no such in of his understanding. He giveth power to, to the faint and to them that have no mighty increased strength. Even the youths shall fall and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But the Bible says, I love this part. He says, but they that wait upon the Lord. Somebody help me here. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's the hope that you should have as you live in this new normal. That even as you live in this new normal and you face all these challenges and problems and heartaches and brokenness, we can look for the new other normal because we know that one of these days Jesus will come. He will not keep silent. So the Bible says, here's the new normal. Here's what it says. The Bible is speaking about the new other normal. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 to 14. Here's what the Bible says. It says, but the day of the Lord will come. <laughs> but the day of the Lord will come. Somebody say amen. As a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be resolved. The question to you today, tonight is what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversations and godliness. And verse 12 says, looking for. You might be looking for COVID-19 to pass. But you need, while you look forward, you need to look up. Look up! Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. All that we have in this life, all the material things, will come to naught. But what matters most is our relationship with Jesus. And tonight, if you have not yet given your lives to Jesus, you have an opportunity to do so. You have an opportunity to give your life, to surrender your all to Jesus. Because if you live only for this world, you are for all men most miserable. But tonight, God wants to give you salvation. And so he's saying, you don't have to change anything. You can come to him just as you are. So the Bible says in verse 13, it says, Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. I submit to you tonight that sin will be no more. COVID-19 will be no more when Jesus comes again. 
All these disasters that we face in this life will be no more. All the problems and the heartaches and the sickness and the deaths and the funerals, we can name it, will be no more. The Bible says sin shall not rise a second time. Affliction shall not rise a second time. But in that new city, that new heaven and that new earth, in that newer than normal environment, will only be righteousness. <clears throat> Today, you can join the waiting band of faithful commandment keeping people as they await the new or the normal. Today you can join and joyfully lift your voice and sing the song, lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Tonight you can, you can join, you can join the, the band of faithful commandment keeping people as they await the new and the normal. And you can join and sing the song. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We believe the time is near when the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing. Jesus Christ is king. Would you join? Would you leave where you are and come to Jesus and be a part of God's faithful, faithful, waiting commandment people? And, 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 and would, you, would you be ready for Jesus to come? Today, my counsel to you, my counsel to you is that you need to build your hope on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. If you build your hope on the sinking sands of life, the sinking sands of life will crumble, and you may crumble with it, but when you build your hope on Jesus' blood and his righteousness, you have a sure foundation that when Jesus comes, you can go home and experience the newer than normal. The only way to be part of the new other normal experience is to build your life on the solid rock of Jesus Christ today. Tonight, I invite you to come to Jesus. Wherever you are, you can submit yourself to Jesus, draw nigh to him, and he will draw nigh to you. You can, you can, you can say, Lord, here I am. Take my life and let it be consecrated. Lord, today, tonight, God is calling you. You don't have to stay out there in the world. You don't, have to, you don't have to go through all of these problems. Jesus is able to give you strength and give you that hope of the newer than normal. And so tonight, I encourage you that if you're out there and you, have heard, and you have heard this message, you can call the hotline right now, the prayer hotline right now. The numbers are 403 2273, or you can call 456 2273. You can call the hotline right now. There are persons there waiting to pray for you and to encourage you. And if you, if you want to give your life to Jesus right there, when you make that call, you can say to, to any one of us, You have surrendered your all to Jesus, and now you are ready to go all the way with Him. I know that God will be happy. We ourselves will celebrate with you because we know that's the best decision that you can ever make. And so I encourage you to make that decision tonight. Don't wait until tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow holds, but make that decision tonight. Today is accepted time, not tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow holds. So I encourage you to come to Jesus. Call the hotline even tonight. Call the hotline. Salvation is always a sense of urgency. It is always urgent. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. But you can call the hotline 403-2273 or 456-2273. We want to pray with you. We want to encourage you. And we want to help you to be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. That newer than normal environment. Wherever you are at this time, <clears throat> I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. As we pray, I want to pray for you. And there are persons who are praying for you even now. 
And so we bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear loving, gracious, eternal Father, we look up to you because while we live in this miserable world, we know that you are still our hope, our blessed hope. What a blessed assurance that we have that Jesus is ours. Oh God, in a special way, you have reminded us that even while we live in this new normal environment, even while we look forward to the passing of COVID, oh God, tonight, we don't know because COVID might be here until you come, but we can make the choice tonight, the decision tonight, instead of looking forward for COVID to pass, we can look up because our redemption joy at night. Pray God that some soul, some man, some woman, some boy, some girl who would have heard this message tonight will see the need to make that choice for you to repent to turn away from self, turn away from the world, turn away from the sin, turn away from, from, from all the lawlessness that takes place in our society and turn to you so that they can experience that newer than normal environment. Oh God, I pray that you will give somebody out there the courage to call the courage to say that I have given up all and I'm ready to make that decision for Jesus. I pray, Father, that when life on this earth is no more, that even those of us who have already accepted you, that we'll be able to stand and say, Lord, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. May those, Lord, who are not in this category, that they will make that decision even tonight so that they can be a part of that category where they can stand with the faithful, stand with those who are waiting patiently for you to come. They can stand and they can lift their voices, lift their hands and say, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. Oh God, save somebody tonight. Save a man, save a woman, save a boy, save a girl. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We ask for your continued mercies and forgiveness upon us, we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. That was indeed powerful. Wait. Wait on the Lord. Look up. Keep your eyes on Jesus. May we strive to have families who are resilient families for heaven, our ultimate goal. Thanks for staying tuned with us to the end. I know you have been blessed as I am. Remember our Wednesday night's Hour of Power as well as our Youth Life program on Friday evening. On Sabbath morning, we invite you to join us again for a blessed Sabbath experience. See you there, and remember to invite a friend so that they too can be blessed. Let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful for your many blessings towards us. In particular, Lord, we are grateful for our families. Lord, we depend on you for the strength to build resilient families. Help us, help our families, Lord, who are struggling to never give up on you and our families. Bless us to this end, we pray with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and see you next time right here as we join together and we wait on the Lord. Bye. Let's
Savior forever, He sought me and bought me. 